Did you know that the Greek word for liver is hepat? And that's why when you see any medical terms that are related to the liver, they always start with the word hepat, such as hepatitis, which means the inflammation of the liver. Anatomically, the liver sits directly below your diaphragm on the right-hand side of your body. Physiologically, the liver processes almost everything you eat, drink, and breathe in. More specifically, the liver cleanses the body by metabolizing hazardous substances, aids in digestion by producing bile, regulates the supply of body fuel, and uniquely, the liver is also the only organ in the body that can completely regenerate itself. In a recent review done by Michaelopoulos, it was found that liver regeneration occurs in all vertebrate animals from fishes to cats. The liver can completely regenerate itself with just 25% of its original mass. While the liver is regenerating, the remaining liver continues to provide all of its bodily functions as normal. Eventually, the liver completely regenerates itself and liver regeneration is terminated. The exact pathway of this process is currently unknown but it is extremely important as it prevents the liver from growing out of control. Amazingly, in a study done by Stars et al, this process is so efficient that when livers were taken from large dogs and transplanted into smaller dogs, they decreased in size, and when livers were taken from small dogs and transplanted into larger dogs, they increased in size. Now that you have some background information about the liver, let's talk about two of the most common liver diseases, cholestasis and fatty liver disease. First. Let's talk about cholestasis, which is the impairment of bile formation and flow resulting in interruption of the circulation of bile acids. The impaired circulation of bile acids results in the accumulation of potentially toxic bile acids around the body. But what exactly is bile? Bile is a fluid made of cholesterol, bile acids, bilirubin, and water that is produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Bile makes it easier for enzymes to digest fats by surrounding it to make it hydrophilic, meaning water-loving. Absorption occurs via the apical, sodium-dependent bile transporter present in the brush border membrane of the cells of the intestine to the veins which will be sent back to the liver to clean the blood before heading back to the heart. The remaining bile gets excreted in the feces. In recent studies which looked at potential treatment options for cholecystasis, experiments were conducted where the apical sodium-dependent bile transporter has been knocked out in humans, which shows a decrease in bile acids in the blood by 50% with minimal side effects. Now let's talk about fatty liver disease. In fatty liver disease, we observe lipid deposition in the hepatocytes, which eventually leads to decreased liver function. Normally, fat is metabolized by the liver and other tissues. But if the amount of fat exceeds what is needed by the body, it is stored in adipose tissue and organs around the body. Fatty liver disease has been linked to the metabolic syndrome, which includes increased abdominal fat, poor insulin sensitivity, high blood pressure, and high triglycerides. Uniquely, certain demographics are more prone to developing fatty liver disease than others. For example, multiple studies have shown that the prevalence of fatty liver disease increases with age and males are at a much greater risk to developing this disease. More specifically, in a study conducted by Chen et al. with over 25,000 participants, fatty liver disease was observed in nearly twice as much men as it was in women. The burden of fatty liver disease will continue to grow as the Canadian Liver Foundation estimates that more than 50% of Canadians are overweight and 75% of obese individuals are at risk for developing fatty liver disease. Currently, the most common treatments for fatty liver disease includes lifestyle modifications and pharmacological interventions. So now that you have learned about some of the chronic diseases associated with liver, how can you take care of your liver to prevent them from happening to you? Here are some general tips you can take to help you take care of your liver. These include eat a healthy diet, exercise regularly, limit your alcohol intake, and manage your medications. These preventative steps will not only keep your liver healthy, but your whole body too. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Demystify.